<laughs> Father and son dockside, enjoying a bit of mischief in Jamestown, just across the water from Newport. It's exactly the sort of scene you might find in the comic strip Wallace the Brave, set in a mythical seaside village called Snug Harbor. Ah, uh, well, I mean, I'm sure as most Islanders know, there is an actual Snug Harbor, uh, a little south of where we are in Jamestown. And, um, you know, I grew up in Matunic, and uh, I love, you know, southern Rhode Island. Uh, but Snug Harbor, the name always had a nice ring to it, so I, I thought it would be appropriate for a, uh, you know, a quaint little seaside town. That's William Henry Wilson. Like some of the great comic book superheroes, he has a secret identity. Uh, 2172. By day, he owns and operates Grapes and Gourmet, a local wine shop. But he's also a nationally syndicated cartoonist under the pen name Will Henry. What pays the bills, the comic strip or the liquor store? It's the comic strip now, which is, uh, it's a dream come true. But the liquor store was kind of an uh, opportunistic um, endeavor. You know, I was working here in my early 20s and it, the owner was very nice. It went up for sale. He lived in Arizona, didn't really want to be here anymore. And uh, he offered it to me at a discount price, and I took advantage of that price. Excellent. <laughs> and uh, because I was trying to do cartoons, I would just, I brought my drawing desk down here. That little drafting table under the wine rack, his window onto the world. Cartooning was something he used to do in his downtime, but it was always his dream job. I got my real first taste of professional cartooning at uh, the University of Connecticut, where I was writing for the Daily Campus. and. Uh, it was cool. They paid like, you know, 15 bucks a week for three comics, which was enough for like a 30 pack and a Big Mac. And it was called Dorm Mates? Uh, roommates. 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 And it was about, you know, a, a typical comic strip. A couple roommates and their, you know, beer drinking mouse that lives in the house. Was the subject matter more adult than... Uh, oh, of course. <laughs> kidding me? <laughs> 19 year old kid living in a dorm room. Uh, yeah, it was uh, a little more adult, a little more adult. After he graduated, he tried his hand at a newlywed comic strip, Ordinary Bill. That was about my wife and I, you know, in our, in our mid, mid 20s. Um, Starting a family. Not quite there yet. <laughs> yeah, that was, it was definitely before the family, but um, it, was, uh, it was more about a relationship, kind of a autobiographical uh, comic. And it was a lot of fun to draw, but it, 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 I kind of wrote myself into a box with it, so it, it How so? Well, it was about my wife and I, and um, when I would write uh, a storyline that I wanted to explore the characters... Um, you would get in trouble. In I would marriage. get in trouble, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, if I did a comic about where well, the characters would break up for a little bit because I wanted to see what the characters would do, you know, I'd have my mother-in-law call me up and say, what's going on over there? And, and then Wallace. how'd you come up with Wallace the Brave? Uh, I was sitting in that uh, <laughs> drawing table in there and looking out the window, and I saw... I just, I saw a kid on a pylon, and it was summertime, and they were laughing, and another kid came and just pushed him off of it, and he fell in the water and splashed, and he popped out, and he was laughing, ear to ear, just so happy, and I thought, that is, that's a moment I want to capture, you know, a fun, ocean, kids being kids, and, and there was like a, a click moment where uh, I saw a path to a successful comic strip. Very briefly, for those unfamiliar, here are the dramatis personae. The main character is Wallace. Um, he's a uh, just an energetic, happy, very positive uh, kid. You know, I wanted to abut the whole trend of um, parents not being very supportive of them, or of, of kids, or you know, kids being kind of whiny brats. You know, I wanted a very positive, happy family, which is what I experience. Um, but he's the main character. His best friend is Spud, who's kind of the neurotic. He's a weird kid, and he's very self-conscious of those weird things. But Wallace celebrates them, and I think that's what, what makes them click. There's Wallace's kid brother, Sterling, who never met a bug he wouldn't eat. And then there's Amelia, who's the new girl in town. She's very feisty. Um, she's the one that likes the phone. She's the one that doesn't have much patience <laughs> for them. How close is this family to people that you know? <laughs> who are, the, who are, the, are the characters based uh, on anyone in particular? For instance, suspiciously close. There is feisty <laughs> Amelia, and mm -hmm. your sister's name, suspiciously yes. enough, is Amelia. <laughs> and I would never cross her. <laughs> uh, the characters are, are very much based on, uh, they're actually based on my family. Um, you know, my, my little brother, Ian, he is kind of based. He eats a lot of bugs? 
as a kid, he was wild. They used to call him Naked Ian. <laughs> uh, and I'm sorry, brother. <laughs> That's Ian with William's son, both of whom inspired bug-eating Sterling. People have compared it to Peanuts, to Calvin and Hobbes. Uh, it's old-fashioned in a way. Yeah. I, uh, I'm trying to build a world where um, the kids are, th there is technology in their world, but I, I want Wallace, the main character, to be the one that says, that stuff is fine, but I enjoy being out in nature. I enjoy being out just the world. That indifference to technology is something Wallace comes by honestly. I'm an old school guy. I still have a flip phone. You know, we still have an Apple TV from like 2010. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think a little bit of that trickles into my comic. Right. It's the world you hope for your kids. I hope so. Yeah, really, absolutely. The inspiration always close to home. The weird thing is, when I first started drawing this comic, uh, I was maybe 29, 28. I had no kids. I was married. And the characters, especially the parents and the kids, were, were very much based on my experience as me being the child and the parent characters were my parents. After a couple kids and like, you know, being in the family life, I've noticed the parents have kind of evolved into my wife and I. And uh, the kid characters, I see a lot more of my kids in them. Interesting. So there's been an evolution of that, uh, you know, personally and in the comic strip. In other words, the cartoonist and his character have evolved together. A lot of the stuff I wrote about my parents was a little more idealized because it was memories of childhood as opposed to experience it real life. Uh, and which has its pluses, you know, it's, you know, rose-colored glasses, I suppose. Can you point to an example where you got an idea from something that happened in your own life? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, there was a, a comic that just ran last Sunday where, uh, you know, when I draw my comics, I'll either draw them here at the liquor store or up in my, you know, studio. And one time I, I came down from the studio and, like, you know, my, my wife is wearing, like, a cape and like a Dr. Seuss hat and she's holding the ladle and the kids are like half naked and they got stuff all over them and they're playing this imaginary game. And I just thought, this is crazy. <laughs> like, what are you doing, honey? <laughs> and uh, they all made fun of me because I wasn't in costume. And uh, so I, those kind of, the, uh, you know, moments I, I try to capture for the comic because they're surprising to me, but they're real. It's the kind of comic strip that, that does have multiple audiences, it would seem. Oh, like, yeah. There's I a level so. at, at which kids would enjoy it, but also the grown-ups get a crack out of it, too. I hope so. I mean, that's kind of like that, that like Pixar sweet spot, you know, where everybody can en enjoy the feature. And uh, Who were your influences? Oh, I mean, you know what? I'm going to... Or who, who, who do you really admire? You know... I, I can say all the comic strips you've heard of, but I'm going to talk about comic strips that are being done right now that I admire. Um, Dunce is a Norwegian comic, which I just, I love. I love. It's about uh, a, a father and son living above the Arctic Circle. Um, and then I love Macanudo, which is a uh, Argentinian comic. By yeah, that's years. so terrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, that, that, that's a great comic. I find a lot of inspiration in that. But do you hope someday to be in the pantheon of the ones that are more familiar to our audience at least? Secretly, yes. The I would Charles never... <laughs> Schultz of Rhode Island? I would never tell anybody that, but it's obviously in my head, but it's the day-to-day the -day is just getting the comic out the door. It's a daily comic, and it's, I don't want to say it's a grueling schedule, but uh, it's a quick schedule. I work four days a week uh, with some nighttime coloring, so you know, I, I'll, probably do, I'll probably do seven to eight a week which kind of banks some for later. Right. Uh, I was like two years ahead of my daily, you know, deadline. And then I had two kids, and now I'm like, you know, three weeks ahead. <laughs> <laughs> soon, soon you'll be raising to catch up. <laughs> it gets easier in some ways and harder in others. I believe it. As they grow. But you'll get lots of new ideas. That's probably. what I'm hoping for. That's the reason I had the kids. <laughs> <laughs>